we are at the headquarters of the West Volusia Historical Society interviewing Ronnie Solomon about his life in DeLand. And the date is March 27th, 2023. And thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. And contributing to the knowledge of this great town. Happy to help. <laughs> so uh, let's start out by talking about, um, were you born and raised here? Yes. I'm a DeLand native. I was born here in 1987. And were you born uh, in a hospital? Or? Oh, yes. I was born, back then they used to call it West Volusia Hospital. That's why I was born. The same little hospital that's over there now. Uh -huh. Tell me about your family. Uh, well, interesting enough, I am the 14th child. Um, I have seven brothers and sisters on my mother's side, and I have seven brothers and sisters on my father's side. They met in their 30s, I think like in the 70s. They dated for about 15 years, and then, ah, at 45, my mother gets pregnant, and here I sit. <laughs> she just had a birthday. She just turned 80. So I'm her youngest child, and I have a lot of brothers and sisters, but most of my brothers and sisters' ages range between late 40s 50s and 60s, and I'm in my 30s. I'll be 36 in June. So you're the baby in the family? Yes. Okay. Do, does your family get together often? Oh, yeah, all the time. Like, and it's so big that like all of us never get together all at the exact same time, but I, like some of my brothers, they, they all have their own kids, which are my age, and their kids have kids. So there's birthday parties, baby showers, weddings, funerals. Um, so, you know, a lot of times I do get to see them a lot, but it's like, it's a lot, it's a lot of them, a lot. Tell us uh, where you went to school and what kind of activities you were involved in. I went to DeLand High and I was a cheerleader in high school in my 11th and 12th grade years. Um, I was a captain on my 12th grade year. Um, I used to do a lot of stuff around homecoming time. I love homecoming, um, you know, I used to dance. I stepped on the step team. It was called Push back then. You know, just the all out fun homecoming court every year. Like just very, very school spirited. Um, yeah, what else did I do? Where'd you go to elementary school? Oh, I went to Stark Elementary and um, I went to Southwestern Middle School. I lived in the same house, so I don't have those stories where I went to this school, that school. I went to Stark K through five, went to Southwestern six through eight and Deland High nine through 12. That's it. <laughs> but I liked it. You know, I, I love school. School was fun. What was your community like growing up? Uh, my community was very big, very, um, how can I say this? Like, since my mother and father were older, their friends were older, their, the company they kept were older, so I had more of a mentor, like a lot of people that, wiser people, you know, little things that you don't get sometimes when you have younger parents, I feel. Like, so, you know, like my community, like I had my grandma, she was born in 1916, so she was a big influence in my life. She passed when I was in 2003. Um, and then, you know, you had like my aunts and uncles, and then there's always like just the family. Then a lot of my nieces and nephews were very close because I'm the same age as a lot of them. Yeah, so like my oldest sister, most of her kids are older than me. So, you know, we all hang out, see each other. I don't see everybody all the time, but we, um, it was nice. It was a nice community. You know, I lived, my street, my house is the only street on the, on the, on my house is the only, ugh, getting tongue tied. My house is the only one on the street, on Little New Street. It sits behind the little DeLand African American Museum. Has like a little amphitheater, that big old blue house that sits behind it. That's me right there in that little corner tucked away all my life. Um, so like I've grown, I'm, I'm a figure in the community, like people, expect to see me you know I've been in the same little area all my life I go out and see the world but you know I always come back home what part of the world have you seen oh I just came back from Mexico um, when during the pandemic I started doing travel assignments as a CNA Pennsylvania Colorado Tennessee plan a trip to North Carolina hopefully I win this trip to Vegas I'd like to go different places I haven't been too much out of the country yet. I don't have a passport yet, but I think the furthest I've been out of the country is Mexico. And then, you know, I, the Bahamas, I've been there. Anywhere fun, I'm gonna make a, make a, make a, I'll get there. So you are a CNA? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And what's yeah. that like? Oh, it's good. I um I come from a long line. My mom was a, a um, health care taker. My sisters are nurses. Like a lot of my family does the whole health thing, and I have a compassionate spirit. So I enjoy taking care of people who can't take care of themselves. I've been doing CNA since two thousand and eight. Yeah. I don't even like to remember that number, but that's how long it's been, you know. And um, it's been it's challenging at times, but it's it's a job that I can say is really rewarding at the end. Even though it's hard, you know, you're making a difference in somebody's life. What kind of activities did you engage in as a youth in your neighborhood? Oh, um, I used to be a part of a, like the Chisholm Center community, like little after school program and the summer program. You know, it's kind of like a little recreation thing. Other than that, I would always just hang out. I skate, skating rink every Friday night. I would go to skating all the time or ride my bike. Did you say ice skating? Oh no, like the little Deland skating rink. Oh, okay. I used to skate a lot, like a little jam skate. I was uh -huh. in my skates a lot when I was a kid. Uh -huh. Or ride bikes, you know, just typical little boy stuff. You know, um, it wasn't until I got to high school that I, my more flamboyant side started to emerge. <laughs> And what was that like? Uh, you know, I just discovered my love for dance and art and fashion and things of that nature. You know, because not have, being so young, like, I didn't grow up with my brothers and sisters. Like, I didn't see my brothers play football and stuff like that. So all of my things learning, I learned them on my own growing up, you know. So it was, I didn't, my dad, you're a little boy, you do little boy stuff, which was fine with me. But when I got older, I realized I like to dance. I love music. I love to put on costumes. I love makeup, you know, things like that. So it was like when I got to high school and really like just started watching TV more and seeing other things outside in the world. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting too. And then I became, I got on the step team and that was my way of like being able to dance without going home and be like, oh, you know, I'm a dancer now. Oh, no, I'm on the step team. Guys do step too, so it's okay. And what but, does a step team do? Like, um, you ever see like fraternities or sororities sometimes in historically black college and universities and they march in and doing all the little fun little steps and stuff? It's kind of like, it's a version of dancing, but you make sound with your feet and hands in a unison with a lot of people, which was, it was really nice. And then, by 10th grade, I discovered football, and I, I wasn't a football player, but I was on the athletic training team where we go to all the games, and we were a water boy, you know, but didn't know at the time that when you are a water boy, you are still considered a varsity football player, so I have a varsity football letter from 10th grade, like I played football, I think that is so funny, and then... Um, but I was secretly watching the cheerleaders. I was like, I'm learning all the cheers. I'm studying them. Like, that was as close as I could get to them without actually being a part of it. So then I, once I realized when the tryouts and everything were gung-ho, I was afraid to tell my mom and my dad that I wanted to be a cheerleader. So luckily, my sisters and brothers are so much older than me. I brought my, convinced my sister to take me to the meeting. And she signed like she was my parent. And we sat in the meeting. I go to tryouts. I do all this stuff. No, my parents don't even know I'm doing it. And then I come home and I'm like, Mom, I need $600. <laughs> She's like, for what? And she, I was like, well, I joined a team. And the membership is $600. And she was like, what, what team did you join that cost $600? Is it at the school? And I was like, yeah, it's at the school and everything. I was like, just don't tell dads. Just don't tell them or whatever. So she came to the school. She meets my cheerleading coach. And now my cheerleading coach hands her this list of all these things that we have to pay for. And it's due by the end of the week. $600. My mom flipped. But she's seen in my eyes that I really, really wanted to do it. And she saw all the initiative I had took on my own. So she paid it. She wrote a check right then and there, gave it to the lady. She fussed the whole way back home. Still not 100%. I could tell that she was not 100% sure exactly what I had joined or what I was doing at the time. But, you know, she, she went along with it because my mom never, she never stifled me. Anything creatively I wanted to do, she would let me do it. My dad, too. He would, he'd have his ways about him because he's a man. But, you know, for the most part, it was no, like, just downright you can't be gay or you can't be flamboyant. Never, I was never told that as a child growing up. So, you know, I joined the team and now I'm a cheerleader and now we have to go to cheerleading camp. But luckily it's at the school, so my mom has to take me. 
and she drops me off and she's like, I can't pick you up because, you know, I have to be to work at three and y'all don't get out to five. Your daddy gonna have to come get you. And I was like, huh? He ain't coming up here. All these girls running around and they were like, it was only three other boys on the squad at that time. I'm like, oh no, he's not coming up here. So I, I just have to be my tenacious self. And every day at Chili Camp, I found somebody that mama was gonna give me a ride home because I, I ain't got no ride. I can't do it. So now I'm cheerleading and a whole season goes by. My dad don't even know I'm a cheerleader. I didn't cheer every football game because he's used to me going to football games because I was a water boy. So in his mind, nothing had changed except for I got this new athletic shirt that says Land Crosser with all this glitter and stuff. He didn't, say, he didn't think nothing of it. He know I'm extra. So I'm cheering and cheering and cheering. And finally, one football game, just out of nowhere, he walks in, not knowing that he's going to come see me as a cheerleader for the first time. But he just he would come frequent to games sometimes. But his habit was he didn't like to sit around a lot of people. He would always sit on the visiting team side because there's always less people over there. So he was way across the field. Never comes up, never says anything. But when I got home that night, he was like, was that you out there on that field throwing those girls in the air? I was like, yeah, that was me. He was like, damn, when did you get that strong? I can't get you to do nothing around here. <laughs> so that was it, and that was it. You know, and I'm, I'm a cheerleader, and that was the only little conversation we had about it. And we kept on going from there. So, and then cheerleading, like, I was a teenager in the Bring It On era where everybody wanted to be a cheerleader. That was the thing to be. They put that movie on TV, Columbia Pictures, and cheerleading took on a life of its own. So like from 15 to 21, I was a down hoe, go to the gym, cheerleader. That's what I did. Like all, all, everything else took a back seat. I was just cheerleading. And, and you felt accepted. My... Oh yeah, you know, you are accepted in cheerleading because you know, there is no, oh, he's straight, he's gay. It's girls. And the guys, and the, you, if you're a guy and you're straight and you're on the chilling squad, kudos to you. You're gonna have a field day over here with all these pretty girls. And if you're not, you're just one of the girls. And you know, it's cool too. Either way, it's cool. So yeah, cause I cheered with guys that were straight. And when I was in high school, two of them were straight and two of us were gay. So, you know, but it was cool. They get girlfriends, we get sleepovers. You know, it works. <laughs> but yeah, I, lo I love cheerleading and dancing. Were you in parades? In Deland? I never got to do a Deland High School parade because I used to run for homecoming court every year. And every year I would win. And when you win homecoming court, you have to ride in the convertible with your nice dress and your sash. So I never got to cheer in the parade. But I wasn't upset about it because I, I got to be solidified as one of the most popular people in the school at the beginning of the school year. So it worked for me. You're very outgoing. Yes, I am. And do you wear dresses then? Yeah, oh, I dress up. I dress up all the time. I like... I like to think of myself not so much as trans, but like as maybe a pretty cross-dresser. I feel like cross-dressers have a bad like rap for themselves. Like you think of a cross-dresser, you think of a man that wants to wear lingerie, all hairy, but it don't have to be that. You know, some people just enjoy the androgynous of women's clothes. Not saying that I necessarily want to go be a woman, but I can, I do find fun and straddling the fence like just a little lash a little nail you know how to completely flip my character and then sometimes you may see me I got these braids and I got a beard you know it just depends on how I'm feeling for the day and how do people react to that luckily I'm big I know I'm six foot two I'm 300 pounds people you may have something you may want to say but some people see my size and my my tenaciousness and they don't say anything they may just do one of those little numbers, which is fine with me. But um, I feel like I'm authentically myself and it's never going to change. So either you're going to accept me or you're just not going to be around me because this isn't a facade. You're not going to come back a year from now and I'm a whole nother person. I'm going to be just me. And if you take the time to get to know me, you'll find out that I'm really a nice person. I'm not like some whoremonger or some pedophile, crazy person, nothing like that. I'm just a general, just a person that likes to express themselves through makeup and clothes and hair, and I'm just authentically Ronnie. We have, um, we're living through a rough time in Florida. 
mm-hmm. um, with this governor um, and the legislature and the laws that have been passed, the anti-woke and the don't say gay. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel that that's had an impact on your life? I, I just, I wish that, I don't know why or who up in the heavens decided that Ronnie, being who I am, I'm going to go to school and and not be bullied and not be picked on and make friends and hang out with people and people accept me. I don't know what I did differently, but I wish other kids could find that confidence in themselves. And as far as not being able to say gay in school, a little too late. If you tell somebody not to say gay, that's going to make them want to say gay. And I heard something on TV just today. It was like children are born with love and empathy. And if you just tap into that magic, you can teach them to love anybody right out of the gate. You have to teach these kids not to like this or not to want to be that. Those kids don't see any difference in each other, you know, in school and stuff like that. Teenagers, yes. But if you start with those little ones and explain to them, like, there's gay people, there's straight people, there are some people that are born in the wrong gender, but it's okay. But you have to start at that young age before the world starts to seek in and starts to give them ideas that may be a little bit more comfortable for them to accept. It might be not as comfortable to accept that little Ronnie wants to be a girl. It might just be as easy to say, don't talk to him, stay away from him. Don't, you know, that Mm -hmm. might, because you don't understand it, so you'll shy away from it. But you should just teach him, it's okay. If he wants to dress like a girl, that's fine. If you want to dress like a girl, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody said that, oh, you have to be straight. You woke up and you were straight, so you wake up how you are. And if people just accept themselves, we won't have all this legislator, all this, because how many of them men... How many of those men in that room making up these rules got skeletons in their closet? Because I walk, I walk in a world that most people don't, straight people don't see. Like, I know that some of y'all sitting up in this room making these laws about not saying gay and not saying this are doing things that you shouldn't be doing with wives and children and all this, that, and other. You know, so, like, it hasn't really changed my world because I'm not really, really political. But, like, it's, it's going to change something. You're putting, you're putting gay people in the forefront when it don't have to be like that. Like, I felt like we were on the right track when we were telling people to stop bullying. What happened to that? What happened to the kids getting picked on? Not even the gay kids, the skinny kids, the black kids, the Asian kids. What about them? Let's, let's focus on that because these kids are killing themselves. So you're going to say not stay gay, but they're still gay. They're going to be gay. I'm here to tell you, you're born that way. So it is what it is. You, you cannot say it, but it's still there. So you're just going to ignore it. But yeah, political. <laughs> um, you're active with the Deland Pride Group? Uh, I want to be more active. I work so much. But I do come out. I come out and support when they have Deland Pride. I um, I just was at the Deland Pride night. I try to at least make it once a month. My friend is actually going to be running in the pageant this year in June, so I'm going to help him with help her. Excuse me, sorry, friend, with her um her presentation, her Deland presentation. Can't say any more about that. Don't want to give away no secrets. <laughs> But yeah, um, I, I, I do come out and support. And I also have a cousin. Um, she, she runs an organization called Rising Against All Odds. And um, I do stuff with her sometimes, too. So yeah, I get out. But I work mostly and sleep a lot. Like, it, it killed me to get about to bed today to come up here. Because I worked a lot this weekend. Um, do you feel that... Um I mean, you you found that pretty much acceptance in your family, mm-hmm. for example. Do you go to church? No, I don't go to church. I, mm, uh, church, that's one. You know, like, for me, I know that I'm gay. I know that ain't nothing going to happen or nothing going to change. Ain't nothing happen or, you know what I'm saying, to make me this way. I am just this way. And point blank, frankly, I just can't sit in a room with people that in the back of their mind, Jesus loves me, but you're gay, you're going to hell. I could find something else to do with my Sunday afternoon instead of sitting up here, like going home scared. I used to leave church afraid. Like if I, if I get hit by a car and die, I'm going to go to hell. 
You know, like, who wants to live like that? So like, you really believed that at one point? I did, I did. I prayed for God to take this away from me. Like, I cried at night thinking about it, but ain't nothing changed. You know what I'm saying? Except for the love of myself got stronger, and I just had to realize that there's a lot of people in the world that are really brainwashed. Like, they are, they are really brainwashed, and you really think that these people, you think somebody chooses to go through what they go through? If I could, I would be the straightest man in the world just to have an easier life, but if that's, not, that's not me, it's not gonna happen. This is the skin he gave me, this is the road I have to walk, so it's the road I'm on, and church, nah. Now, do I have a higher power and believe in all that? Yes, yes, very much so. But just like the whole church thing, and this, 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 and this, this, that, no, mm -mm. this can't be right. It don't feel right. But your parents are very supportive. Oh yeah, my parents are very, very That's supportive. That's a big difference. Yeah, my parents are very supportive. Like, and I, being having so many brothers and sisters, statistically, if I have 14 brothers and sisters, statistically, somebody else is supposed to be homosexual. And they're right, I have two other homosexual brothers and sisters, one sister and one brother. And my brother, he is 24 years older than me, and he got the whole don't dress like a girl, kicked out the house, all of that. So my mom did have a time where she was that parent, but my brother's still gay. So when I came along, just as flamboyant as he is, she had a, I feel like she had a second chance to do some things differently that she didn't do the first time. And I'm grateful for that. And my dad too, my dad had a gay daughter. So, oh, that, they both had separate sets of seven. Then they got, came together and had me, so yeah. So yeah, but they're very, very supportive, you know. Never really like, it wasn't like a big walking around the house, are you gay, are you gay? Like it was never none of that, nothing like that. Are you happy, are you full, are you, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. So like, I was, I was just wrapped up in love. And my grandma, she always said, if you're gonna be, I can't say how she gonna say it, cause that's not politically correct. But if you're gonna be gay, be the get best little gay boy that you know how to be. And that's all she ever said about it. Your grandmother said that mm -hmm. to you? At 80 something years old, she didn't say gay, she said the F word. But you know, I ain't gonna say that for the camera. We, gonna, we ain't gonna say that, but you be the best little one you know how to be. And that, that was that. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I think my brother, he, he don't know, like he went through so much stuff that I didn't, I don't even know how to handle that. <laughs> getting kicked out and can't be like, I don't know how to be anything but me, but you know, my parents, they were good. Like I, been, I never not felt love, never not felt accepted. I always felt like I belonged. I didn't feel like they didn't want me or anything like that. I felt like they were proud of me, you know? Cause like a lot of my brothers and sisters didn't graduate high school. You know, I, like even for that, for me, that was something they were really proud of, you know? But I did, I finished, I did what I was supposed to do and everything like that. <clears throat> um, do you see things becoming, do you see gay people becoming more accepted in the land? Oh, the land, good old the land. I tell people about the land all the time. The land is a special place. There's not a many other places like this for gay people, like, the land is just accepting. Like I, I, all of my classmates, I tell them all the time at every high school reunion, I get drunk and I tell them, thank y'all so much for not bullying me, making me feel appreciated. Oh, I'm about to cry, just think about it. Mm. Just feeling appreciated. The land has always been like a, I, I've never really had too many problems. Like I, people have said stuff, but I don't feel like I've gotten anything said to me no more than any other person in the world. Like it wasn't like, nobody never like chased me. Nobody's never tried to beat me. Nobody's never like tried to not include me. Like I, I won homecoming court every year. There's 1200 students in my grade and they only picked two boys and two girls. And out of those, all those people that run, I get picked every year, you know, like they loved me. But I think too, like I was just being myself. You know, I wasn't trying to fit in, I was just being Ronnie, you know, like, not gonna say everybody was my friend, but everybody had a genuine respect for me, and I feel like that's how it is in the community, like, 
we mesh in. Like, gay people mesh in here. Like, when you go to Da Vinci's on a Tuesday night, it's not a gay crowd. That's a blended crowd. And it's more straight people in there than gay people, from what my eyes are telling me. You know, it's like a different appreciation in D-Land. Like, we all love on each other. But I remember growing up, we used to have things like keep D-Land beautiful. D-Land is a community, and you feel it when you live here. Like, that's why I will never leave. Like, this is my home. This is like a little community. I get choked up, like, even thinking about it. But, like, it's a community. It's beautiful. Like, everybody, you know, there's black people, there's white people, there's Hispanics, there's gays, there's straights, and we can all come downtown and all have a good time together. Like, we don't have to, like, the gay people over here, the black people over here, the, you know, you know, we all can come together and really enjoy each other, and it's always been like that. Like, I've been to Cracker Day, you know what I'm saying? Like, down at the fairgrounds. Like, I've gone to the, the boat parade at St. John's. Like, I, I, I do the Hantoon Island. I do, I, I go all over this city. I have friends in every avenue of this place. And it's beautiful. But there are a lot more gay people coming out now, too, in the land. So that has a lot to do with it, too. Do you have an outstanding sort of memorable thing that, that uh, has happened in your lifetime here that something that really changed you or hmm you know what i can say like <laughs> this might be a little off brand but my my moving like i i have so many friends that have hiv and i was afraid like for years i wouldn't take a test i just, I just don't want to know i don't want that to be my defining moment because i know what i've done in my past so if it happens I, it's a possibility, you know what I'm saying? So I can't be mad at nobody but myself, but then I got the test and it was negative. And then I got another one and it was negative. And I was like, I'm not, I, I don't have this. I don't have what uh, all my other friends have. Like, and it was like, at that moment, I was like, you doing something right. Like, and I felt like this weight just came off my body. Cause honestly, for like five years, I thought I had HIV. I didn't think I, didn't know I had it, but I was afraid to get tested and, you know, and like, cause everybody else had it and I'm, this person died and that person died. And I'm like, oh God. So I finally, it was my cousin. She started her rising against all odds and she, she come by my house. She be calling, you need to come to a test. You need to come to a test. I'm like, girl, I'm coming up to grab the other child. She don't leave me the hell alone. But I finally got the courage and I just did it. And then, you know, I was negative. And then I was just like, wow, I'm not, I'm not a statistic, because everything else about my life is statistics, you know what I'm saying? I'm so, but it was a, a really defining moment, and it was in that moment that I started taking more responsibility for my health and being more of an advocate for things like that, you know? And that did, it did change me. It changed me a lot. It made me more, more knowledgeable about my body, because I thought I had lost a fight that I didn't even know I wasn't even in, you know? So it, that, that moment in my life when I knew I was negative, like even thinking about it now, I got chills. Just like, oh, thank you, G. Well, thank you, whoever, because I showed that I was gonna be on the other side of the fence. But yeah, that's so many of those different moments. But that that's a very strong moment that I think back back to. It's like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, there. Um, I'm gonna ask you two questions that are um, standard for these interviews, mm -hmm. and one of them, you're fairly young, I mean. <laughs> 35. <laughs> yes, most of the people we interview are older. Really? But, uh. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> hey, um, based on your experience, what advice would you give to a young person today, younger than yourself? Just remember that to take life as a grain of salt. You know, everything that you see isn't exactly what you think it is. And, you know, just take moments to appreciate things. Take time to get to know people. Like, really make educated decisions. Don't follow the herd. Be yourself. Always be yourself, no matter what's going on. Because it, at the end of the day, you have to make yourself proud first. Don't matter about nobody else. You got to make yourself proud First, if you satisfied with yourself, then you are satisfied. Don't live your life trying to satisfy other people because you're never going to get the. As long as you satisfy yourself, your cup will always be full and it'll show in your everyday to day life. And that's what comes across that emanates from you. Really? Yeah. Be yourself. 
Mm-hmm. Be yourself. You only so, get one life to live. You got, you have to be yourself. Like, for what? You're going to close your eyes one day and it'll all be over. And you're going to think, I live for other people. I don't want to go to the ground saying, I wish I would have or I could have or I didn't do this. I go. I go on trips. I dress up like a girl. I let this beard get long. I get my hair braided down to my butt. I do it all. You know, because I'm going to look back and say, I did that. Instead of that saying, I wish I would have. I lived in my skin. But Is that how you would like to be remembered? Mm-hmm. Yes, I would love to be remembered as somebody that just did what made them feel good, treated people the way he wanted or she wanted or they wanted to be treated. You know, I, I just want people to remember just happiness for me. Like, I don't want nobody to ever think I made an enemy because I haven't. Like, you know, anybody, I try not to make enemies anywhere I go. I try to just love and light, just love and light all the way through to the end. Remember that, that he was pe- gentle giant. That was something else my grandma used to call me, the gentle giant, big old, big old teddy bear. Thank y'all for taking time out to get my perspective on the land because I don't know what anybody else's experience is, but I love the land and I am thankful to be able to say I grew up in a city that let me grow into the little beautiful flower that you see here today.